Good morning, grand rising. I have been cuddling myself all morning in bed. This is the crunchiest, most comfortable blanket. Just, just listen. <laughs> it's so cozy. <sighs> but it's time, it's time for me to crawl out of bed. I have been dropping into really deep meditations here and I think it's because it's so quiet around me and I've just also been alone for the past few days after my friend left and so it's just been easier to drop in with myself and I think that anytime you're in a new environment it's so much easier to be present because you're taking everything in for the first time. But my yoga practice has also been super breath focused which Here's another daily reminder that yoga is not just asana and that is the most gross external part of what yoga is and it's really all about using the gross to get to the subtle. But I'm about to get my moon soon and I have just been so emotional the past three days just crying for various reasons, crying thinking about like a future wedding or how I'm going to raise my kids or the fact that I just know and get to admire beautiful things in the world. Just everything has been making me cry and feel so existential too. I had um, some sweethearts over for dinner yesterday and I was just feeling so existential about what is the point of anything and what it's all working away at and like we can continue endlessly stimulating our minds and senses with yummy things and colorful colors and beautiful sounds but at the end of the day we're just watching it and all that's happening is a continual and endless watching i think i was just making everyone like kind of depressed so i was like okay i need to save this for my journal anyway if there's anything i've learned in my years of sadness is to just just let go of the brain you know stop trying to make everything make sense to your mind and simply show up to practice. Come to practice and all is coming. So that's what I'm gonna do and not attaching a story to every single feeling. And you already know the post-shower routine. I will lotionize my whole body and then put on sunscreen. I love using zinc oxide sunscreen because it is the most effective. And this one is by Native, the sponsor of today's video. It's reef safe, broad spectrum sunscreen made with 100% zinc oxide. It feels lightweight, absorbs quickly, and leaves no white residue behind, which is so rare for zinc sunscreens. I've tried so many, but this one is formulated to be invisible under makeup with a matte finish. It has SPF 30 coverage and protects against UVA and UVB rays and is available in two delicious but subtle scents, coconut and pineapple and rosé, as well as an unscented option, which is the one that I use. But the texture is not sticky and non-greasy and it feels quite hydrating with the vitamin E and also with avocado oil in the facial sunscreen. The ingredients are are dermatologist tested with non-nano zinc and made with 97% plant-based ingredients that are reef safe and compliant with Hawaii's sunscreen regulations and is vegan and cruelty free. I know all of us earth angels love basking and frolicking under the sun but it's super important to protect our skin and we all know that sun care is a crucial step in our skincare routine so why not level up yours with native sunscreen. Native wants to make sure you're really looking after your skin so they're giving you 30% off both face and body sunscreen normally $36 you can get both items for only $25 with my code HITOMI2 click the link in my description box use my code and protect your skin this summer it's hot in the sun but still kind of cool in the shade Living my best cottage core life in this outfit right now. I'm gonna make some tea and 
I, I wanted to take myself on a date today. When we're around people, I feel like we abandon ourselves way less. Like it's easier to be good to yourself when you have a partner in your life or a close friend or even roommate that you live with. You kind of just show up for yourself more. And I just want to be able to do that for me and give myself all the love that I'm so excited to share with my partner. Or even with my close friends, I pretty much love them like a lover, like cooking yummy meals for them and cuddling and treating them. I just love to love and make people feel so worshipped and adored and I just want to do that for myself because I don't always show up as much in my own life. I'll like, give myself kind of shitty meals and just be standing at the counter not making things as intentional or I won't actually be as present with myself as I could be, not actually enjoying my own company as much as I could. I also think that seducing yourself and worshiping yourself helps to keep your own sexual energy flowing and really just makes you want to make love to yourself, <laughs> you know, treating yourself right. I always add this linen robe on top so that I can fully cover myself and just be baggy if I need to. Or I can just take it off and I can use it as a picnic blanket. It's stained, just like most of my clothing. <laughs> Let's go! Ow. Oh gosh. I started off my day with some lunch and stopped at this delicious black owned Afro Caribbean plant based spot. I had platanos maduros, everything was 10 out of 10, and this bowl with lentils and rice and vegan protein. I was so nourished on every level. And there were some vintage stores nearby that I stopped into. I didn't end up getting anything, but it's always fun to see what other countries have in their vintage stores but after i stopped by my favorite park of all time at least so far it's one of them it's up there in paris i love this beautiful carousel and there are just tons of structures around the park like sculptures and archways and just little intentional places and so much space to lay out which makes this park feel so romantic i feel like this is definitely a good date park journal and read this is the book i'm reading daughter drink this water let me just read you some of what i underlined i've been sharing this on my instagram stories i've been quite a slow reader lately it's just so many good simple truths if you live in contradiction to love your soul suffers if your soul suffers all souls suffer for all souls harbor every soul when i call you woman i am not only calling you woman I am not casting nets, pile-driving steel bars for your captivity. I am not saying what you are or what you are not. No. When I call you woman, I am singing. I am praying. I am calling out glory in its deepest name. When I call you woman, I am beholding, reminding, kneeling, praising. When I call you woman, I send streams of you through my forest, clearing the underbush, startling the birds into song. I am peering into God and catching your effervescence. When I call you woman, I speak a ceremony with no finality. This I call you is a healing lodge, smoke bursts sent out to diffuse mundane neighborhoods and wilderness. When I call you woman, I call for sacredness, might, memory, ableness, that sable nest that is the beginning of flight and sky. Womanhood is not yours. Womanhood is yours, not mine, not anyone's. My words are but love's gushing. I am grateful to have you consider what spirit says through me. Right here, Como Rebi, is um, sunlight that shines through the leaves of trees in Japanese, and it's one of my favorite things. It literally makes me so happy. <sighs> I just got home. I was listening to Rosalia and dancing in my head, and now I just want to dance out loud. <laughs> but I actually have some work to do, so I'm gonna do that, and then have a bath and watch a movie on my projectors. So. 
I will get back to you in like three hours. <laughs> it is the next day. I ended up just editing and passing out yesterday. I'm so happy to be in the tub right now. I started bleeding and it's just so soothing to have this warmth all around me and I have my hair in some little sock curls right now. I feel like I'm so comfortable being ugly on camera now and by ugly i just mean my fullest self when i'm not trying to look cute at all and i know i should reframe that but i think that ugly isn't even a bad thing it's just like not trying in the way that society wants you to and I measure the quality of relationships in my life sometimes by how uh, how comfortable I feel being ugly around them, you know, especially with men. I'm like, do I feel obligated to shave around you and cover up my acne scars and under eye bags and do my hair or can I just be completely untamed around you and same with friends. I just think about how in the beginning of romantic relationships a lot, I will or I used to, I don't know if I would be different now getting into a relationship, but I would just put so much makeup on my face and always show up in some matching bra and underwear and just be really put together in that way. And then slowly in every relationship, I would just not feel the need to do stuff like that when it wasn't natural and how comfortable it always gets. And I feel like I'm just showing up to every relationship now at that comfortable stage and like, you know, you, you should just fart around me. Like, let's just get it over with. <laughs> let's just be real with each other and not perform anything. Even just talking about like poop early on. And there are so many little forms of intimacy that are so underrated. I recently um, had an, an encounter with this queer femme and we made love and afterwards she went to the bathroom and I heard her farting really loudly and I was also farting silently and then she walked back in the room and was like so I'm sure that you heard that and I just wanted to talk about it so that I didn't make it weird and I was just like say less I I really had to fart too and then we just laughed and that just felt so intimate and real I was like if you spread your cheeks apart sometimes the noise doesn't happen and she was like I was trying that and it wasn't successful <laughs> I, I think that genuinely if you're so comfortable with your own human experience then you bring that level of comfort everywhere with you and it's so safe and I just know when I was younger and first talking to boys mostly, I couldn't be myself in any way. I was so anxiety ridden and I was so afraid of having like a single hair on my body or my lips being dry. I mean, I actually always like having juicy lips, but you know, I was just focused on looking attractive to them that I didn't even give myself the time and space to feel into my body and if my body was even attracted to them or what I even wanted or what our connection was and I feel like that's all I listen to now is like how my nervous system feels around people how safe it is for the realest version of me to come through and I guess I'm just getting used to it I'm just getting used to it being okay to be who I am fully and it's just the first time I've ever given myself full permission <laughs> Anyway, I'm just gonna lay here. My camera is kind of going a little bit crazy, I think, because of all the colors. While I was setting up the projector, I was listening to a Glennon Doyle, Brene Brown podcast, and those women always just crack my heart open and speak to the truth, and it's such a green flag for me anytime I meet anyone else who knows their work or has read their books, and I'm just feeling really grateful for all of the information that is available to us on emotional intelligence, on healing our reactivity and releasing shame and guilt. I feel like 
there's a lot of hope in my heart for the collective healing and I know that love is the only way that I know how to fight. It's the only thing that has kept me safe all these years and I'm just going to keep embodying it to the fullest capacity and just see what happens from there. But thank you so much for being here and joining me on this sweet little series of events. I hope you take some deep belly breaths until I see you next and try and drop in intimately with yourself even if that's just not looking at your phone while you drink your morning coffee and uh, say hello to the inside. I love you so much. I cherish you and I'll see you soon. Bye!